Last week on Food Journey, you joined me on an amazing adventure into the deep. What a fabulous, memorable and adrenaline-fueled experience, which I will never forget. The highlight, of course, catching my first fish. We caught 11 fish in total, and these are all from our waters right here in Lagos. Today, I've been invited to the executive kitchens at the Lagos Fishing Charter to cook up some of the catch of the day. I've chosen the Almeco Jack, the Spanish mackerel and the tail end of that huge snapper to showcase their individual flavors and textures. Hi everybody, we're in the kitchen at the Lagos Fishing Charter in Ikoyi and today I get a chance to do something amazing with the fish that we caught yesterday. My fish in particular was the Almeco Jack. We've also got a beautiful Spanish mackerel and we also have the snapper, the prize huge fish that Celine caught. So I'm very excited to get started. The first thing I had to do with these fish is actually decide what I was going to do with them because they're all different and they all have different cooking times, different textures and different flavors. So I want to start off first of all cleaning the fish. Now they've very kindly scaled them for me, one of the things I don't like to do. But now we're going to do some filleting and we're going to do some slicing, some deboning, some stuffing. So let's get started. The first fish we're working with today is the Almeco Jack. I've chosen the one I caught. Scientific name? They are strong fighters, I can tell you that, and have dense flesh, kind of like tuna in consistency, and is also eaten raw as sushi. Okay, so the first big boy, the one I caught. I'm so proud of myself. This is the Almeco Jack. This is a beautiful cooking fish. And what we're gonna do with it today is we are going to stuff it with my grandmother's old style bread and sausage stuffing. I'm really excited about this. First thing we gotta do is we gotta cut it open. Now it's been cleaned of scales. We still got these guys over here that we need to cut off. So let's start with that. Okay, so we've got that spiny part off there, and you want to do that because it can give you a nasty prick. So let's just go ahead and do all the other spines. Oh, that's a tough one. This very tough part is going to need some heavier equipment. As you can see, there's this big spiny bit at the back and I'm gonna take a cleaver to it, right? As easy as pie. Okay, now with this big boy, what we've gotta do is we've gotta split it down the middle and make a bit of a bigger cavity for the stuffing that's gonna go inside its stomach and in some of the head parts, right? So let's do this. This fish is gonna be stuffed with a rustic spicy stuffing. so we need to maximize the space available in the fish. Okay, so that's all done. Now let's move on to the Spanish mackerel. Spanish mackerel, or is a migratory species weighing in at about 3.2 kg on average, characteristic black spots, and no scales to clean. It's oily and delicate, with a quick cooking time. My favorite preparation, of course, though, is smoked. First of all, I want to cut this also down the middle, split it down the middle, and try and get rid of some of the, the bones, if possible. You can see the almost buttery consistency of this fish as I cut through, although my knife is sharp. I want to keep my cut as close to the bone as possible while working. 
the bone structure here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and get rid of the spine and keep the fish intact. And you see we've got the flesh exposed beautifully. All right. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to snip the bone out. Okay, I got a little bit of flesh on the bone. That's all right. This can be used as a stock later on if you like. But basically what we have now is a beautiful Spanish mackerel with a lovely cavity there, which you could do anything with. You could stuff it, but in this case, we're going to uh, rub it with a little bit of paprika and garlic and roast it in the oven, which is going to be great. You'll be able to taste all the natural flavors in the mackerel without being too fussy with the ingredients. Oh boy, what an absolute shock it was when Celine reeled in the prize catch of the day. Careful, these are sharp, huh? These are sharp. Okay. Okay. Star of the day! I doff my cap and I hand over. Yeah. Snapper comes in all types of sizes. Red snapper or like hanging around reefs. They have a firm texture, slightly sweet taste, and are slightly pink inside. They can take a good old cooking. And today we're going to use just the tail. Okay, now that we've done that, we're ready for the big tail of the huge snapper. That's it. So if you see this, the tail is like this, you can imagine how big the fish was. Anyway, you've seen a picture of that, but I'll show you again, just in case you forgot. Okay, now here we go. Again, we've got these huge spines to get off. Now to fill it off both sides of this tail. It's going to yield a ton of tasty flesh. The thick skin can be delightful when you fry it too. A sharp edge knife is needed and a little care and patience. Filleting skills take practice to perfect. Like many of you out there, I'm still honing my skills. Whew. That wasn't easy, but I got it done. And you can see this is a real eating fish, isn't it? It's got that lovely thick flesh. And I think it'll blend very nicely to what I'm gonna do to it today, which is sweet and sour snapper. For the sweet and sour fish, we're going for some colorful peppers. The vinegar, sweet pineapple, as well as the spicy elements will make this dish really zing. Now back to our first fish, the Almeco Jack. It's gonna be stuffed and baked as I said, and I'm using onions, white bread, sausages, Spanish chorizo for this one, with my grandmother's essential ingredient, thyme. So stuffing a fish might be a little bit strange to some people, but it works. And let's get started. I've got some beautiful peppers here. I've got an orange, a green, and I've got a local tatashi, nice and sweet. Then I've got some beautiful onions and sausage. All right, you can use chicken, beef, or pork. For our spices, we've got some thyme, we've got white pepper, we've got curry, we've got a little turmeric, and we've got some all-purpose seasoning, and of course, the breadcrumbs. We're starting with the textural elements first. Always remember how important color is. Whoever sharpened these knives did a good job. I'm using a deeper pan. Put in some vegetable oil. And we're going to use a big handful of onions. Let those just sizzle and become translucent. This is a hot kitchen, everyone, so you see me sweating a lot, sorry. <laughs> In goes the green pepper, tatashi, and orange pepper. Now you can see the lovely sizzle and the blend of beautiful colors and textures starting. So we're just gonna give these a flip.
and then we're going to add our sausage. You want to kind of break these up. We need the sausages to be well mixed in with everything else. So take your time to break them up. I'm using curry powder, adobo, all-purpose seasoning, and dry thyme, as well as some white pepper. smells absolutely amazing and oh I'm gonna add my own addition some chorizo chorizo is a type of Spanish sausage the casing is intestine it's cured and smoked with garlic piment and that red paprika and salt it can be cooked or eaten just like that delicious See how the flavors are being built up? Spicy, mild heat and no extra pepper needed. Let every individual flavor sing. Now a shower of spring onions. Bring color and freshness to this mix. What I need to do now is I need to add my breadcrumbs. These aren't exactly breadcrumbs, they've been picked through nicely. Crumbs would have been a little bit smaller, but it's time to add them in. Add them just a little bit at a time, mix them in and then add some more. It might look like the breadcrumbs won't be able to all mix in, but the bread's gonna soak up all those lovely juices and become the vehicle that brings everything together. All right, so that's done. Once it's all incorporated well, just set it aside. I would like to make a few slashes on this fish, like so. So here goes the stuffing part. What you gotta do is you gotta just open it up and stuff it in. I think I might have to make a little bit more of a cavern here, a little deeper like that. So here's the stuffing. You just stuff it in. Little by little. We want to get as much stuffing into the fish as we can. I'm securing the fish closed with some toothpicks to hold it together in the oven. So I've got this fish all stuffed and ready to go in the oven. So let's just drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the tray. Like that. It's a lot of olive oil. So we're just gonna swirl it around. And then we're gonna put our big boy on it. So pretty. I almost want to kiss it. Bye bye. I'm just going to lay it on there on that oil and then I'm going to turn it over so the other side gets a little bit of oil. And now I'm going to season it with a little bit of black pepper and salt. Okay, let's do a little black pepper all over this beauty. Even the head and some salt. This is rosemary salt. Tap that in a little bit and then turn the fish over and do the very same thing to this side. So 
some black pepper. Okay, lovely. I'm gonna give this another little drizzle of olive oil on top. And cover it over with this bit of foil. To start, give it a little tiny little, tiny little air hole, and this is ready. Now, it's time to do the mackerel. Both of these are going in the oven, so my idea is to get both of them in at the same time, okay? So we've got this beautiful oily mackerel, and what we did, as you saw earlier, as we kind of splayed it open to reveal this beautiful flesh, okay? So the first thing we've got to do is, in my mortar, I'm gonna crush two whoops, cloves of garlic. So let's just do that. Get a good crush on this garlic. Now add some paprika and mix it all in. Okay, a little olive oil in there. We're making a paste today. I think mine needs a little bit more runniness. So let's just give this baby a little salt. And now we're gonna just drizzle this lovely garlic and paprika and use our hands to just work it into all areas, even in the head meat, making sure we get the tail and the sides here, a little bit more for here. So that's all nicely done. On the outside now, I will just make some slashes. All right, so now we're gonna get this big boy into the oven. I'm starting off here, you can see, at 250. And later on, I'm gonna turn it down to about 210, okay? It's been a crazy hub of activity in here. Everyone's sweating, everyone's moving around each other. And now we're gonna do a little bit of vegetables to go with that beautiful mackerel on the tray. I'm gonna do some courgettes to roast with some carrots. So the carrots are actually over there, while boiling right now. You can see them over here. And we're gonna get roasting these as well. Top and tail and slice down the middle. And lay them around the fish. Little salt. drizzle of olive oil. Beautiful. All we do now is wait for the carrots. Our carrots are ready now and it's going in the oven to bake. Okay, I'm having a glass of water because you can see I'm sweating. It is hot in here. Ah, feels like heaven. So now we've got sort of to a halfway point. I'm gonna make a nice, fabulous sangria for our guests. The things I'm putting into the sangria are pineapple, apple, and some kiwi. And I'm using just my favorite little wine and some cranberry juice. Nicely with this fruit, and then we can serve over ice. 
it's crunch time. And our snapper tail got a crisscross cut and it's going to be fried in hot vegetable oil. This sauce has a lot of layers really and so long as some key elements are present the sour, heat, salt and sweet you can spice this up any way you like. We're serving our meal today with couscous, new potatoes, and parsley, and some garlic aioli. The Azem family and friends assembled one by one for the fish feast. It's been a nerve-wracking ride. But in the end, real justice has been done to the catch of the day. These are the people that made it all happen today with me and I'm so appreciative. This has been Gone Fishing and Gone Wild in the Kitchen. So from Food Journey, we all want to say a goodbye. I'm going to go eat.